Welcome back to the Siren. Today we're going to be working on the main mast. I've already built the foremast here all the way up. It just, well, most all the way up. I just need to add a block here, a block here, and a collar here and coat it with uh, clear coat. But it consists of several elements here the cleats, the, main, the mast itself with its cheeks and fish, and more cleats on it, and the mast head or mast top with its. Um, I forget what they're called, they're not cheeks or something else. Just the instructions tell me if I want to look at them. I got it built up with the, the bands around it and all the blocks. Right now, instructions say just build the mast and then build the top. I recommend building the top first because the top is where you're going to make it so it fits the mast or make the mast fit the top rather than the other way around. So, the first thing we want to do, I have the parts here. I have the parts for the, the top for the trestle trees. Got these pieces here. Okay, these things are called the bibs. We're not going to need those. We're not going to need the mast top or the, yeah, the, mat, um, the top of the mast so connects the main mast to the, or the top mast to the mast itself. We're not going to need that. What we need first is the trestle tree. And these things here are just are slotted so they can just fit together. Top should be flat. Don't glue them together yet because you want to get them together. And then you want to take a look. Because you'll notice where this taper end is, this end's longer than this end. So you want to make sure you don't get one backwards before you glue them together. And get them nice and square and everything. But again, you don't need to glue them together right now because at some point in time, they're going to get glued onto this piece. That's going to make them solid. So I'm going to set that aside like it is. And on this piece here for the top, we have planks to go on. So I've cut four for the back, four for the front, and then one for each side here so I can start getting my spacing right. The rest of these will be cut to length. These are laser cut, just like the trestle trees, the bibs, and the top. These you have to cut to length, and they are 1 8 by 1 3 second strips. <clears throat> And if you're like me and you're using a caliper to measure them, convert it to decimal or millimeter so you can see it more easily. The reason I say that is if I take this piece and I stick it in the caliper and I measure it, that's one point that's point one two eight. It's a good state of an inch. But if I take this thing and put it into fraction and measure it, seventeen one twenty eighths. If I was really squeezing it to one eighth. So if you just convert it to decimal, you can get it close, or convert it to millimeters, you can get it close and call it good. You know, that way you know which ones you're using. Because the wood is not exactly down to three digit tolerance on its measurement or four digit tolerance. That would be insane if they could do that with this fine of wood. <clears throat> Again, I am just using tight bond for my glue. And you can just come in using your favorite little tool here. Spread some glue. I, use, I start with the back here. So I'm going to put all four of these things on. I'm going to put all the glue all the way on this back section. Actually, truth be told, I think this is the front and this is the back. And if I look at the mast I built, the fish that's on the front here is in front of the mast curved parts goes to the front and the top mast will go in front of the mast glue on, glue it down I'm going to rush it here because I want to get to the next spot of this next thing I want to do so I want to come in, I've already cut these two pieces of length, and I want to put those on here. That way, when I put these front planks on, everything can be hopefully parallel. Get 
those in. I'm going to grab my small rule here. I'm just going to go right down it, scrape off the glue and make sure everything is lined up. And then before I get too further, I'm going to get these planks over here in place. Put that on. Take my glue out of the corner here. Make sure they're lined up still. And now, I'm going to let that sit for quite a while. Okay, everything is glued on. I went ahead and glued these pieces on the sides as well. They're just cut to length and fit in. This has been sitting there clamped for a bit. Like I said, tight bond glue sets up quickly. Next, you want to trim this thing to fit. Don't try to go through everything in one cut. We'll go ahead and just get everything here cut. Now, one word of advice is when you get around this corner, don't cut around here because this thing's loose at all. It will just rip that piece of wood off. Come from the opposite direction and cut in. That way there's support behind the piece of wood you're trying to cut. Same thing on this side. Nice mass top. Now, if I can find where I just put my sanding block, just come in and give it a quick sand. Get rid of any unevenness. I'm using a, actually a foam pad here. But sometimes I just want to come back and a nice flat surface sand it. And then we're going to go across the top because you're not going to have a chance to do this top again. It's all going to be painted black, so it doesn't have to be like pristine in color. And once you have that, then you can glue this piece on. But I think before I glue this piece on, I am going to go ahead and get this hole cut out to the top. And I think to do that, I'm going to come in and find a drill that fits in the hole. Like that. Let's see how this works. The other one I just cut out the knife and it came out kind of ragged. Make sure you're drilling against the surface. And you just come out and clean it up. To be able to come in here with a round needle file. It's probably good enough. So next, gluing this piece on and it goes on top of the planks you just did. This is this is the top of the fighting top and it gets the planks, it gets radial beams on it and the bottom stays smooth. Don't know why I think the bottom would be one of your planks as well. You can do that if you want. Most the top that gets everything on it because it's the viewpoint. So with that, we'll get this piece glued on, weight it, and then we'll work on getting the trestle tree installed once it's dry. Okay, this is all dried up now. Next, we need to put the trestle trees on. Remember, I did not glue these together, but when you put them on to the platform, 
As you can see here, there's a piece of wood right there at the edge of it. Um, they really don't show you another good view of the bottom of the trestle of the of the uh, fighting top. But you can see in the picture, the piece of wood is right here along this edge. But when you put this on, if you put it on this way, it's not going to work right. When you get these things pretty much seared up, this is hanging off the edge. Turn it around, fits a lot better, and this piece of wood gets on the edge of the hole. I'm not going to worry about these marks here, because when this is all good together, I'll do a little slight sand on the bottom of it. And it, it all gets painted black. This gets glued on now, and then we'll let it dry and we come back to the top. And then one last thing we can do really quick here is there is a rail that goes across the front is made up of two rails and four stops. There's one rail that goes on the bottom, one on the top, and the four uprights. And those are from 1 32nd by 1 8th strip is used for the strip here. This strip there's across here. So this piece. Which you can't see because of the black. This piece right here. So we'll get that in position and we'll let this thing dry up. That was 1 32nd by 1 8 1 18th. <laughs> I think it's 1 8th. <clears throat> Okay, a one eighth by one thirty seconds piece for this uh, base of the rail, and it does not go all the way across. It actually comes short a little bit, so it actually actually the width of this opening. So let's mark that there. Cut it off, and it just gets glued right on down. Just like that. Not much here. So we'll let that dry. And when we come back, we have the battens to put in. All these battens here to put in around. And then we have a bunch of holes to draw. We're, about, we're making the rest of the rail last because it's going to be glued on after the blocks and the dead eyes. And the whole thing is painted black. So it's a strap and we'll come back and get the bat in place. Okay, this is all dry. Next we need to put on all these battens. So this should be out of one thirty seconds or one thirty seconds. If you're enjoying this kit, you know you really don't have that accurate down to that fine of a uh, wood. So we do what we do. Each one will go on. First one will go on, come to this corner, and then go around. Everyone will be pretty much cut to uh, cut to length and to fit. Also notice that here, these are all pretty much parallel. While the drawing, they're really not parallel. Matter of fact, on the drawing, they do kind of show them as being in line. Let me grab that. There's a drawing for the main top. And you can see they are kind of lined up. Going straight across, so. That one's almost lined up. 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 <coughs> but we'll just do them as best we can. Mass is going to be in the way, you're not going, and stuff's going to be around it, you're not going to see that anyway. So we'll go ahead and get these in place then.
up here. There's three here. First one at this corner, one about here, and one in between. I'm not going to worry about the pencil marks. This is all going to be painted black in the end. And what you can do, probably should have done for putting the trestle trees on, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to glue them on so they look good. I'm going to start in the center so they come close to this hole right here, but not in it. And they're all going to use just wood glue anyway. Um, if I can find my pot. Oh, there it is. I prefer using the wood glue for this kind of stuff because the glue can be cleaned up around it and doesn't create a shiny spot. And I find that the paint sometimes will go to the wood glue but has a hard time going to the um, super glue. So, just cut off a chunk of this. Glue it up. Doesn't take much. There's nothing structural about this. You just come in and stick it in. As I probably Trim this end off at an angle first. If you want to line up, you can just cut a piece that goes all the way across, too. So if I had cut a piece that went all the way across, I just come to there and to there. And then trim the center. And they'll be lined up. I'm not going to worry about that though. I'll go like that. Cut it off. And then with this fall off piece, you can come and get the next one in place. Let's figure out what I'm gluing it on. And just keep working the way around like that until you have them all in place. I'll get them all in place and then we'll see what the next step is. Here we go, all the battens are in place. Now to drill the holes in it. Um, to mark off the holes, I just held it up and eyeballed, drew a line across there, drew a line across each one of these for the dead eyes. And then these things here you can see this one is one board in, this one's three boards in. In between the two battens, I just marked off the holes where I want them. The foremast has two extra eyeballs that you have to drill holes for. The main mast does not have those. It's also showing holes along this strip here for the rail. I'm not doing that yet. Uh, the instructions say to leave the railing off on the foremast, but go ahead and put on the main mast. Um, I'll probably put it on, on both at some point in time, but after everything's assembled onto the, the mast itself. So for those holes, I'm just using a 364 cents drill in a pin vise. A little bit bigger because I'd like to do it because this gives me the ability to um, feed the lines through easier. So here goes, I put these holes in, or no, when you're doing your holes, Make sure you're not coming onto the trestle tree. I just know these trees are marked onto the trestle tree, so I'll have to move them forward a bit. So, I'm just come in and get the holes drilled out. Clean up the edge. And then this thing can be painted black. I'm going to show you how I'm doing the rigging, the blocks before I paint it black, because it'll be easier to see on the camera. So, we'll get all these holes drilled, and then we can come back and start getting some of the blocks done. Okay. Okay, so mast top is pretty much done. Still use the railing on it, still use the rigging on it, the blocks and the dead eyes. I'm gonna hold off on those. I want to get the mast built first so I can get the two fit together before complicating matters. Mast itself instructions give you a step by step. 
part one, taper it part two, carve the top square, both this piece and the tenon. Part three, round off the edges of the square part and flatten out two sides of it for the cheeks and attach the cheeks. One thing they do tell you early on is to carve the foot. I'm not going to do that. If you notice, my mast is a little long for the plants by design. When I carve this top for the square, I'm going to leave it long. So that when I come down here to where the flats are, I have extra length at the top. That way I can carve these flats and still have a lot of room to carve this tin on the top and be able to trim the tin on the top to match the cap so it shouldn't stick through. Just notice I have a piece I need to put onto the foremast still, but I have have done, I'll do that later. Do them both at the same time. Anyway, so I have it long, figure out which one's going to be my top, doesn't matter. Make sure I'm on the bottom, come down far enough that I pass the bottom of the mast. And just give myself a little mark here around it for where the flats are going to go. And the flats. I can go and start carving it down. They say mark your lines here to where your flats are going to. You can do that. But uh, what's going to boil down to is how it works best for you. Me, I find if I take it really easy with the exacto knife, I just come in here since this end is going to be a little bit rounded in. You don't want it straight. I can come and just start carving off. And then I can go out to the edge of the desk, put that side down and carve the other side. And then come back and carve the side between them. Put that flat on the desk, on the edge of the desk, and carve the other side. And then once that's done, I can come back, mark out the top where this tenon is on top, and carve it to shape to fit the mast cap, the square hole in the mast cap. That way I can get everything here shaped, and then I can cut the top of the mast off to be on top of the mast cap so it doesn't stick through like it shows here. It's totally flat. So I get these things carved down. You don't want to see me carve my fingers up or anything on the camera, so I'll get that done. Once that's done, two of these flats need to be extended down to about this area for the cheeks. Or on either side, and then those cheeks can go on, and then you can sand this thing and get nice and smooth. So I'm going to carve this first, I'll come back and carve these out, and then I'll put the uh, cheeks on. So I have two sides carved off, fairly parallel to each other. I see a little bump right here I can get rid of. Then you can hold them up on this square of your mast and see if they're the right width. Another thing you can do is take your mast head you built and see if it fits. Mine fits pretty good, so I am happy with how this width is. Now I just got to cover it on these other two sides. Okay, I have this square marked off for this um, little tin on the top goes and went ahead and just ran around here with the, the back saw. Give myself a stop cut. Stop cut is so that when I trim it, cover it back, the blade will stop right there. The wood will come out above it, but always it'll stop. That needs to be cut down so it fits the mask cap. There, that stop cut there as I curve down. The blade just naturally wants to stop there, and just wants, wants to come off right there. Do the same thing on the next side. You can see the knife just kind of stops right there where that stop cut is. Right there, kind of cracked off. Right where that stop cut is. Same thing with that one. 
needs to start shaving it down until it fits. You can see I'm off center here, so I'm going to come off on this side here and get it down a little bit more. Get boot up my stop cut. I can still use a stop cut as my guideline of where I'm going to. So it fits that way. So it fits this way, but not this way. So this side here, I need to shave off a little bit. I can see it's a little thicker. Don't have to get it exactly centered. And I am definitely not exactly centered. What needs to look good is that it looks like it's the large piece is centered on the mask cap. And that this edge all the way around is about the same. If you have to shave off one side more than the other, that's fine because you can always come back and fill in a little bit because this is all gets painted black. So you can use a little wood filler to make adjustments to fine tune it. There. Once that's done, and it's fit, now you decide which side is the front. Once you side beside the front, then the two side cheek ties you can take down for the cheeks, and they're going to be flat and rough for the cheeks. As seen in this drawing, two sides get flattened down all the way, so they can put a cheek on there of whatever size that is. So, once I figure out where the front's going to be, the only thing I can see is this face curves down further, so I'm going to use this as one side. And I'm going to make this side the front. <clears throat> I'm going to worry about carving these things out around her a little bit later. Make sure to check my height here. Check where the fish comes down to, or the cheek comes down to about right here. And this will get shaped the same way of just coming through and just carving that thing off until it flattens off with this. Once that's done, we can get the cheeks in place. We also need to still round out these corners here. So I'll get these cheeks carved down. And we'll come back and do that stuff and get the fish made. Okay, the cheeks are carved down here. One thing I find that is useful is if you have yourself a diamond cut file, like this rather than just a cross cut file is a full diamond it's just a real regular, regular pattern you can just go across it and just rub it like this and it will take down most of your irregularities get on both sides and you'll end up with a pretty good shape to it So that gives me this going down, Dunk, find that up, line that up, right down to the bottom of the cheeks. But you can't see that, right down to the bottom of the cheeks here. Let's get everything lined up. So, I'm gonna get the, so let's get the cheeks glued on. They are, according to the instructions, uh, front fish is 1 16th by 3 seconds. The cheeks are... Uh, cheeks should be one thirty seconds by sixteenth, but they are made from three sixteenths by one sixteenths. So I can sand it on quite a bit. You can probably skip doing the cheeks, but I think it adds a little bit of extra detail here on the sides. These aren't necessary to the thinness it says that's fine and this is my wood for the cheeks so I can go ahead and get these things just glued on either side with the proper length Oops. right there do this one here to the same length
So you got one just a hair longer than the other one. In the same length, ends are rounded. So you want to round the ends before gluing them on. We'll just make it easier. Yeah, that looks good. Then they can be glued in place. I'm going to glue these in with just more wood glue. Just let them sit for a little bit while I clean up my my mess here. <laughs> Here the neighbor's dogs are out saying hello to each other. Find my rounded side. Stick it in place. Somewhat simple, somewhat centered up. And that one in place. And if I have any, any skill whatsoever, these things are actually parallel with each other on opposite sides. Go ahead and put clamps on here just to hold them in place while they dry. They will come back and put the bands on, or yeah, put the, these bands on, goes around. Okay, I've started putting these bands on. The instructions say to use the supplied, in air quotes here, um, pinstriping tape. Uh, they don't include pinstriping tape anymore. The instructions need to be updated. Model shipways, if you're listening, update your instructions to take that out to quit confusing people. I went and bought some pinstriping tape to do these and it didn't stick worth a darn anyway. So I've been using actual string. This is 0.5 millimeter line that I got from Model Expo, but it's Mantua brand. It's a cotton polyester blend. It seems to be really nice to work with. Which another suggestion for Model Shipways, quit using the nylon based line. It, it doesn't work very well. It's hard to work with, doesn't look good, etc. So anyway, what I've been doing with this is so I'm tying it around. What I'll do is I'll create a loop here. And then tightly wrap it around the same amount of times each time. So you do the same amount of times and you get a nice consistent width to your bands. If I can get this thing cut off with a nice end on it. Then you feed it back through your loop. Assuming it'll go. Keeping it tight, then you pull your other suit side out and you pull that loop so it's about halfway underneath. Get everything lined up. And I've been trying to get my knots lined up on the front because the front is going to get this other piece of wood over the top and you'll hide where your knots are.
there's a little bump there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure your lines are next to each other. And then, if you are doing one that's a full lap wrap around all the way around over the cheeks, get your super glue and go all the way around it, rub it in. This one here does not go over the cheeks, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my super glue everywhere but on the cheeks. Let it soak in. And just use my finger, I'm going to rub it in. That will glue the, the lines together and it will glue it to the wood. Snip off your ends. And that gives you a nice simulated metal band around. Especially when you get the super glue on there and then you coat it with your polyurethane or whatever you're coating it with. Now, for these ones that are not on the cheeks, since you didn't glue it on the cheeks, you just come back with a very sharp knife and go right into the slot here where the cheek is and give it a cut, both sides. And if you got your glue right, this piece will come off and leave the band on either side. The same thing over here. Looks like that. And you see the band comes up, ends at the cheek, looks like kind of looks like it goes underneath, comes back out here, comes around, looks like it goes underneath, comes back around here. And from either side they're lined up because it was one piece when you put it on. Now you want to do that every other one is going to do it, go underneath the the uh, cheeks. So I'm going to go finish all these up, including the ones up on the square, and then we'll get the fish in place. So there all our bands are done, all the way to the top, all the knots are on the front here. <clears throat> so then I took the piece of wood that's supposed to be this front fish, laid it against here, marked it out where every band is, and then just used a square file to file in a notch for each spot so now I can just be glued in place and it'll go conveniently over all the knots for my um, bindings here which are going to be my uh, metal bands so you get this glued in place we'll just be glued in with wood glue again clamp in place and let them dry And then once it's dry, we can give it a nice final sanding and shaping. And also once it's dry, we can start thinking about this end to make it fit the deck. So it's really fun to use these little spring clamps on a surface that's narrow and as a surface that is round. So with that, we'll let it dry in place. I'm going to put one more clamp right here. Just looking to make sure I'm making contact all along here. So now we'll just let that dry. Then we start fitting it to shape. I've already made sure that the fighting top fits. Next is to make sure these bibs go in correctly. Um, every time you handle these bibs, keep in mind that it's just a single piece of wood, it's not plywood, and the grain runs long lengthwise to them. These ends can be broken off really easy.